Okay, hello, so uh, it's been a while. I hope you guys are having a good summer. So today is going to be probably a little bit of a longer lesson. So we're going to cover convolutional neural networks and then we're also going to go over uh, transfer learning, transfer training. So first let's go ahead and learn convolutional neural networks because uh, the model that we're going to use today for transfer training is also a convolutional neural network. So you can see from this diagram right here that you have First, your, this would be like your input image, and then you have convolutions, which we'll explain in a second. And in the end, you just feed that into your neural network like uh, like normal. So, of course, this, this is a simplified diagram because, uh, you know, I didn't want to, yeah, otherwise you get too complicated. But uh, this is basically how it, uh, a basic overview of how it works. So, uh, you know, what are the neural networks used for? Well, mainly they're used for computer vision. So, for example, uh, one thing that we're going to do later today is we're going to build a cat dog classifier so you can uh, feed an image of a cat or a dog and it'll classify the images. So, you know, here we go. Uh, so, you know, this is something like what we'll be doing today. So, uh, let's look at what a convolutional layer actually does, right? So, this is what the actual convolution does. So, we have this is our input image, right? So, this is like, uh, we'll say this is a segment of our in input image so you can see it's a grayscale image, right? Because uh, these are numbers from 0 to 256. Now, ideally, you'd want to, you know, bring, you know, normalize these values so that way they're between 0 and 1. But for now, let's just stick with this, right? So, okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a particular part of this image. In this case, the 3x3 three three, uh, area. And we're going to apply this this uh, matrix right here. It's called a kernel. So in this case, we have a 3x3 three three kernel, right? Uh, so what we do with this kernel is we're going to go over this image and we're going to kind of take this filter on, on this image and we're gonna, it, it's kind of like a filter, right? So we're gonna take this uh, over the image and so it's gonna cover, so first it's in this square, then we move, shift it one to the right, shift it again one to the right, and we can specify how, how much we want it to shift. I'll show you that in, co in the code uh, later, but so we can specify all of this, um, but this is the kernel. So you can see, uh, let me explain to you what the math behind this is. So first we're gonna multiply each of these uh, values by the kernel. Uh, looks like it kind of messed up right here. Anyway, so we're going to uh, multiply them. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so now we get uh, the products right here. So this is, again, this multiplied by whatever values were in the kernel. Uh, okay, I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, looks like the text got kind of mixed in between. Okay, but basically we get that, and then we want to take the uh, sum of everything that was there. So this would be our output. Uh, sorry, okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, so that would be our output uh, pixel, and you do that for every single uh, square to get the kernel. So let's go ahead and let's start uh, implementing this. So uh, I'm going to be working a lot in the terminal today uh, because it's it's going to be um, uh, you you'll get a better idea of how to manage files and everything in the terminal. Uh, so let's first make a directory. We'll call it, um, I don't know, we'll just call it neural, uh, NN tutorial for neural network tutorial. So, okay, and then we'll cd into this directory. Uh, there's nothing in the directory for now. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a file. So, well, to create a file, you can use a touch command, right? So, uh, actually, let me zoom in on this so that you guys can see this better. I think that should be good enough, right? Okay, so okay. so touch uh, allows you to create a new file, so you can say touch, uh, and then we'll say uh, just uh, train CNN or train conversion neural network pi. Now we can edit this. My editor is uh, NeoVim, uh, so I just type in nvim. Okay, uh, I can close this for now. Okay, so uh, sorry, one second. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna have to implement a few libraries. Uh, so uh, it's all gonna be for care. So if you remember from our uh, neural network, uh, the previous tutorial, we're gonna use a sequential model because we're gonna have a sequence of layers, right? Uh, let's create it. Okay. So then we're gonna use the um, the MNIST data set again, uh, which is if you remember the the characters, those um, those uh, twenty eight by twenty eight images of characters that you have to classify. Now, to be honest, a, a convolutional neural network is kind of overkill for that because it's, um, this is main convolutional neural network. So 
by the, let me just explain to you why do we use convolutional neural networks as opposed to regular neural networks. So when you have bigger images, right, uh, just feeding all of those pixels into the neural network directly, right, uh, as a flat image as we did before, doesn't work, right? So when you have a 28 by 28 image, it's small enough that it, it'll, it'll be fine. But whenever you have a large image, right, like uh, for example, the ones that we're going to be using uh, later today, the VGG16 uh, or VGG19, those are those are actually taking in 244 by 244 pixel images. So those are much bigger, right? Uh, so it, it's it makes it a lot um, easier whenever you want to work with bigger images. And the reason for that is that these filters, right, those uh, convolutional layers, they act as feature extractors. So as you train them, those kernels are going to alter their values and they're going to optimize so that way they can act extract features from the image, right? So maybe in your in, in this, right, we're going to uh, be able to classify characters, right, handwritten characters. So maybe, you know, some characters have uh, loops, right, like 9, 8, 6, right, they have loops. So maybe one layer might look specifically for loops. So when it gets loops, it'll uh, get a greater output, right? So something like that. So uh, that's why we use convolutional neural networks. They help us extract features, and then by the end, you you've extracted all these features, and then you uh, perform a flattening. So you flatten out the image, and uh, those are the convolutions, right? So you're flattening out all the convolutions because they're so small at this point that you basically have uh, turned it into like a list of attributes, like. Uh, it could be like, I mean, again, we can't, uh, neural networks are kind of a black box, right? We have no idea what's going on uh, underneath, but uh, we can kind of assume like, uh, you know, this is, uh, for th this pixel represents loops, this pixel represents lines, right? Uh, maybe this represents a line going from right to left diagonally, right? Uh, uh, like in a seven, for example, right? So the different pixels could mean different things once you flatten them out. Uh, but we'll see that in a second once we, um, build this neural network. So uh, let's go ahead and also import our layer. So we're going to need a dense, right? Uh, that was the neurons, right? The perceptrons. Uh, then we're going to import something called max pooling. Uh, I didn't explain to you this, but basically it just makes the image smaller. Uh, this layer, that's what all that really does. Uh, okay. Uh, so now we're going to, uh, this is the actual convolutional layer. We're going to use the two dimensional convolutional layer. And finally, we're going to have to flatten the image uh, in order to send it to the the fully connected layers, the, the actual neurons, right? OK. Also, uh, just to visualize the image, we're going to uh, go ahead and import matplotlib. OK. So let's go ahead and uh, actually import the data. So look at our training data set and our testing data set. And uh, if you remember, the command is mnist.load data. OK. So let's go ahead and preview the first image. So show x train. I will say 0. And uh, remember, these are grayscale images. So we'll change the color to gray. OK. And let's go ahead and show that. OK. So if I run that, uh, it'll take a second just to load TensorFlow. There we go. OK. So you can see this is a 5. If we printed out the Y train of 0, it would also be a 5. OK. So we have our data. So now, also, let me go ahead and I'm going to open a terminal right here. Uh, let's make that bigger as well. OK. Sorry. OK. So let's go ahead and cd into here. OK. So from now on, I'll go ahead and Python. Uh, I'll just run it like this, right? So if we run this right here, go ahead and you can see that this is our image. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, we're going to have to process the image. So, okay. So the way we're going to process these are, first, let's reshape them, right? So OK. So we're going to reshape them to be, so however many images, 
by 28 by 28 by by one, right? So we want each pixel to be kind of in its own array, okay? So let's do the same thing for uh, Y train, sorry, uh, X test. Okay. okay, so that's good. Now, uh, and remember, these are NumPy functions. Uh, so, okay. Next, okay, so we're gonna wanna, remember I told you we have to normalize the values. So remember, colors are between zero and 255. So we wanna bring that between zero and one. So the way we can do that is just by dividing by 255. But in order to do that, uh, we need to make sure that um, NumPy knows that these are floats. So we're gonna say float32. Uh, let's go ahead and make this test. Test, okay, there we go. So now we can go ahead and actually divide by 255. Uh, divide by divided equals uh, just a shortcut to do that. Okay, so now let's actually uh, write our model. So I'm gonna okay. So let's go ahead and make, make the model. Okay, so the model is gonna be a sequential. So let's go ahead and add our layer. So first one we're going to do is a convolutional layer. So the first parameter is how many filters you want, right? So for the first layer, we're going to have 32 filters. So remember, we did one kernel. Well, you can, this is going to do 32 of those kernels on uh, every single image. And each of those kernels might look for different kinds of features. Um, OK, so let's go ahead and specify the size of the kernel, right? So if you remember. Uh, in the presentation is a three by three kernel. So again, we're gonna have a three by three kernel here as well. Uh, okay, uh, we're gonna specify the activation function. Uh, if you remember from all the the neural networks before, we, we typically use a ReLU. Okay, so the input shape, finally, this is the last thing. So input shape. Uh, so we're gonna make the input shape a 28, 28 by 28 by one image, right? Because that was the, uh, if you remember, we shaped it up here to a 28 by 28 by one image, okay. So, okay, next thing, so, sorry, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a max pooling layer. Again, this just kind of makes the image smaller. You'll see once I print out the summary uh, exactly what's going on. So. Now let's add another convolution. Okay, so we're gonna, this time we'll add 64 filters. Uh, again, the kernel size will be six, uh, three by three. Okay, also remember uh, I told you I would show you how to specify how the kernel moves through the image. So you can specify this thing called uh, strides. Uh, so by default, it's set to one by one. Uh, so what this means is it'll each time it'll move one to the right and after it's done with each row It'll move one down, right? So uh, That's how it moves you can specify it to be like two by two or three by three or whatever uh, And then it'll move that many horizontally. It'll make that kind, it'll make those strides horizontally and uh, vertically, right? Uh, okay, but we don't uh, need to specify. We'll just stick with one by one, which is the default. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add the activation function, which is going to be again ReLU. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to add the last max pooling, uh, and then now we're going to actually uh, start feeding this into the uh, dense layers, right? So the fully connected neurons. So first, let's flatten this, right? Remember, this is what I said before. This is where basically you have just a single line of uh, pixels, and this will. So it'll be like a one-dimensional array, and each of those pixels, once it's trained, should represent something, right? So maybe it could be like a loop, or like I said before, it could be a specific kind of line. So it'll represent different features, and based off of that, the neural network, the neurons themselves can actually interpret that. So let's start adding our neurons. So we'll add a thousand neurons here. Uh, activation is going to be ReLU. Okay. Okay, and last one, this is going to be our output layer, so 10. Uh, and the activation here, we're going to make it uh, softmax. That's typically the activation you want to use for the output of a categorical thing. So here, you know, we'll have ten categories. Uh, so we want to have ten. We're going to have ten 
we're gonna have 10 outputs, so we're gonna have uh, softmax. Okay, so let's print out the summary. Uh, so this will basically tell us, uh, you know, the. It, it'll you'll see in a second. It'll print out how to. It looks like I misspelled something. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. I screw up. Um, model dot add max pooling two D. Uh, what did I just fix this over here? Nope. Um, line twenty two, right? So, oh, right here. This is the issue. Um, what is the issue? I think I forgot an extra parenthesis. Okay. Here. Let's go ahead and add that then. Okay. That should work. Okay, this is just loading my GPU. Okay, so here we go. Now we have the summary of the model, so right here. Uh, so you can see the first thing is gonna be a convolution, right? This is gonna I think I accidentally actually oh sorry. Okay. Okay, I think I added a. I added a 28, 28, right? Okay. So, okay, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, so this is the output shape. So, yeah, yeah. Because it's gonna. Basically, I can't go to the, the very first pixel because then the. Um, you know, if you have the. Uh, it's like if you have a square, right? And you go to the top left corner, then there's gonna be a bunch of values that don't exist, right? So, it, it's not gonna include those. So that's why it cuts off two pixels from each of the sides. So uh, we're going to have a 26 by 26 image out. And we're going to have 32 filters. So that's why we get 32 right there. Max pulling, like I said, it just uh, kind of shrinks the image. Uh, so we're going to have 13. And you see there's no, no trainable parameters right here because it's just shrinking the image, basically, to make it um, easier for the network to process. Um, OK, so yeah, then we're doing the uh, con another convolution, another pooling. And then we flatten it, right? So we have 1,600 pixels right here. Uh, and those pixels are going to go into these 1,000 neurons. Those 1,000 feed into this uh, 10 neurons. And so, you know, you see right here, there's 10,000 and 10 parameters right here. That's because there's 10, or sorry, there's 1,000 weights which are coming from each of those neurons plus the 10 biases of each of these 10 neurons, right? Uh, if you don't remember, uh, go back to the uh, neural networks video. Uh, I explained that up there okay so we get all the parameters uh, you see trainable parameters is 1.6 million approximately and then there's non trainable parameters now uh, these non trainable parameters right now they don't matter but once we do transfer training uh, you'll see why those matter so okay uh, next let's compile our model so uh, we're gonna specify sorry, okay. so we're gonna specify that the loss function is gonna be Force categorical cross entropy. Okay, so this is usually what you want to use for categorical data like what we have to right now. Okay, so optimizer, uh, for now, you just want to use Atom and you can stick with the default learning rate because uh, that should work for these programs. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and uh, so from keras dot activate, not activation, uh, from optimizers, uh, you can import import okay and you have all of these um, that you can choose from uh, I'll just choose I guess I have Adam V2 um, okay but you can choose Adam okay Adam uh, dot Adam okay uh, and then here you can specify you know learning rate equals and then you can set it to whatever you want right so um, but we're just gonna go ahead and keep it just the default uh, options so uh, stick with Adam and we can do that line. Okay, so that's going to compile. I misspelled model. Okay, so that's going to compile the model. Uh, okay, now let's actually train the model. So model.fit uh, x train 
So that's going to be the images, then the Y train. Uh, that's going to be the labels, right? Uh, epochs, that's how many times it's going to go over this data. We'll stick with 10 epochs for now. Uh, the validation data is going to be the testing data, right? So X, X train, and Y train. OK, and that's all for the for the training, right? So that's going to train the model. Next, so OK, here's the thing. Each time you train your neural networks, if you remember, it kind of it could take a while, right? Especially if you have a ton of images, um, it, it's going to take a while to actually train the whole model. So, you know, you don't want it to just train the model and then throw the model away, right? You want to be able to reuse the model. So we're going to actually save it, right? And then in a second, once we finish training it, then we'll actually go ahead and use it. So you want to use an H5 file, or you can use .keras. Um, so that's going to save the model. It's going to save all the weights and the biases, and the, also the architecture of the neural network. So like these, all these layers and everything. So uh, in a second, you'll see once you finish training it, and we can just go ahead and load that model. So okay. So let's go ahead and train it. Okay. Uh, if there's no errors, of course. Um, okay. So you can see epoch one of ten. Uh, it might take a second because it has to, you know, load up all the images inside of the graphics card and everything. Um, okay. Uh, it's opening some libraries. Okay, there we go. So now you can see it's uh, training. Um, you can see the loss is going down gradually. Uh, that's good. Okay. Looks like it's done. I think it's doing the validation now. Okay, yeah, there you go. So you can see validation loss. That's actually pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not displaying the accuracy. Actually, that's weird. see that the loss is going down uh, not necessarily the validation loss you see right here it went from uh, 0 0.0135 to 0 0.0152 uh, so validation remember that's the data that it's never trained on so the reason why we're doing this is we're trying to make sure that it's not just memorizing the data right uh, so you know when we see that the you know, this might the loss here for the training might go down, but if this is if the validation loss is going up, that means it's probably trying to memorize the data rather than actually training off of it, right? Uh, so you typically want to uh, you want to really avoid that. Okay, looks like it's almost done. Ninth uh, epoch, almost done. And last epoch yeah there the last epoch and and I think we're good yeah so once it does a validation there we go okay so yeah if we look now right here you see that we have this model.h5 um, so that's our model we can use that now so uh, uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna uh, split this and let's open a file. We'll call it uh, loadmodel.py. Okay, so what we're going to want to do here, uh, okay. okay, so what we're going to, we're going to need to, we'll just import Keras. Okay, and we'll, we're also going to, okay, we're also going to import the MNIST data set. So, uh, We're going to import the MNIST so that way we can evaluate it. So uh, we'll load our data again. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll just go ahead and copy all these lines uh, to process the data. So we can copy that and shoot, actually. OK. OK. There we go. OK. So. 
now that we have our images again, uh, what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and load our model now. So so we're going to load the model. This is the function use keras.models.load model. Uh, and so if you remember that model's name is model.h5. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and evaluate model. So let's do model. We'll keep the score actually. So score equals model dot evaluate. Sorry, evaluate. Okay, so we're gonna evaluate the model on x test and y test, and we'll print out the score. So we're gonna use that f string. Okay, the so loss is gonna be so. Four of zero, and we can print out accuracy. And that's going to be a score of one. Okay, <coughs> so that should be all. Um, and you'll see that we created this new load model.py file. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Looks like I misspelled something. Here we go, so now it's finished. Uh, let's see what happened. Uh, okay, it looks like I didn't. Oh, uh, that's weird. Uh, that's weird. It's supposed to be printing the uh, accuracy as well. I don't know why it's not printing. Oh, I know why. Okay, when we trained it, it's because we didn't use the. Okay. Uh, okay, we need to fit. When we go to model dot fit, uh, what I forgot to do was uh, I didn't set metrics equals accuracy. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to retrain the model quickly. Uh, there, okay, so let's just train that. I think this is a metric. Sorry, not in the. Uh, okay. Okay, not here, but in the when we compile the model, we need to set the metric uh, metrics to accuracy. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Uh, wait one second. Okay, so now that we got that, now we can go ahead and train the model. Okay. There we go. So now you can see it's giving us accuracy right here. So you can see at the first epoch we're already at 92%. That's really good. Uh, now you can see it's jumped all the way to like 99, 98%. So. Also, while it's training, let's go ahead and uh, we can go back up here uh, and we can we go, just add this back here, please. Uh, 
uh, now we should be able to get the lost hand accuracy. So, save that, right? Okay, yeah. So you can see it's almost at like 100% accuracy. Uh, but now remember again, this is on the um, the training sample, not the testing sample. So you wanna really be keeping an eye on this validation accuracy too. But you know, that's also very high, 99.84, 99.87. Uh, so this is gonna be a very accurate model. Save our model now. Okay, so you can see again saved our model. So now let's go ahead and run the uh, load model. Okay. Okay, there we go. So you can see the accuracy is like 99.01%, right? So that's a very good model. Uh, so now you could actually use this. Uh, you could use this model. Now that you have this model.h5 file, you can use it in anything, right? You could use it to uh, put it in some kind of application, right? Uh, maybe you could have it to where somebody writes uh, something down on, on some kind of pad or something like that, and you could have it uh, determine what character they're writing, right? Uh, this is only numbers, but maybe you could have something for the alphabet as well, right? So you could have alphanumeric input uh, with written characters, and you could have this model running on there, right? Uh, so you can uh, you, know, you can do a lot of things with that. So uh, now, that, so now we just finished uh, convolutional neural networks. Now let's go ahead and uh, get into the transfer learning. So uh, let's I'm gonna go ahead and create another directory. Uh, we'll call it transfer training. Okay, and let's cd into this directory. Okay. So, okay, let's go ahead and I'm gonna bring in one image. So, uh, I have it in my home folder, at projects, machine learning, uh, at uh, the transfer learning, and Okay, you can copy that here. Okay, so we have our image. I'll show you what that image is of in a second. Uh, also, we want to copy uh, this one directory. Uh, okay, uh, just data. We'll use this in a second. So, uh, also, so this is a directory. So we need to specify the dash r for recursive. Uh, and so now you see data has a bunch of images. So like I said, remember we're gonna uh, create a program that can classify between cats and dogs, so this is the data that we're gonna use to train it on. Uh, and you'll notice that this is not very much data at all, right? You, we only have 12 images of cats and dogs. Uh, normally you would need like thousands if not millions of images in order to train a classifier, right? So I'll show you how we can manage with such little data to get a very high accuracy. So. Uh, First, let me introduce you to the VGG16 um, model. So they also have the VGG19, uh, but I think that one's slightly less accurate, so we're just gonna stick with VGG16. So uh, we'll create VGG16.py, okay. Uh, and just, okay. Okay, so we're gonna, so you know, this is already nicely packaged for us with Keras, so you can say, from Keras dot applications and import VGG16. Okay, uh, there's also some other models you can use, but VGG16 is usually the most popular one. It's a convolutional neural network, uh, and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So, uh, 
we're going to import matplotlib as well. And then also I'm going to show you another library which is called uh, OpenCV. So we import that as uh, import CV2. Uh, okay. So let me show you quickly how to install OpenCV. So you want to open your terminal. Okay. Okay, open your terminal and type in pip install opencv dash python. It stands for open computer vision. Um, so uh, you just hit this, uh, it'll install the package for you, hit enter. Uh, I already have it installed. Um, so this has this is a very very powerful library. It allows you to do if you if you're doing anything in computer vision, you'll probably use this library. Uh, it allows you. It has a bunch of tools to um, process images. For now, we'll just be using it for some basic stuff like loading an image and uh, resizing it, uh, just to pre-process it for the model. So our model is going to be the VGG16 model. Uh, so let's load that. Okay. Uh, there's also different parameters you could specify in here. Uh, I'll show you that once we actually do the transfer training. So let's now print out the models summary. Now, if you don't already have this model, uh, if you already don't, if you don't, if you haven't already used it, at one point it'll go ahead and download it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. It's going to download all those weights for you. Uh, okay, so CD into uh, okay, so Python. Okay. So okay, there we go. You can see now. Uh, this is the the actual neural network, right? So you can see the input layer is going to have it takes in 200, uh, 224 by 224 images. But if you notice right here, instead of just by one, it's by three because it's actually taking in RGB images, right? So uh, this is not just going to take in black and white images. This actually takes color into account. Okay, so you can see then we have uh, some convolutions, uh, pooling convolutions. More, it's a, and then you have the flatten, and then you have your dense. Uh, these are dense layers, and then finally it takes you into the prediction. Now you'll notice this is a thousand neurons, right? So the thing is, this model is developed for something called uh, something called the ImageNet challenge. So it's a challenge where you're provided millions and, mil and millions of images uh, from an online database. And so uh, what the challenge is is that you you have to build some kind of model that is able to classify. Uh, those thousand different classes, right? So there's a thousand different classes, and particularly plants, they have uh, a bunch of, like, uh, they really go specific into the different kinds of plants. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, it's able to classify a thousand different things, uh, almost like a human, right? Humans can classify between thousands of different things upon just looking at them. Uh, now humans are a bit more complicated, but you know, this is still very impressive. Uh, so VGG16, that's uh, I think visual geometry grouping or something like that. Uh, but it's, it was developed by Oxford. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna show you quickly right now how to uh, use this model uh, in your own programs, right? If you want to use it. So uh, first, let's go ahead and load our image. So like I said, we'll be using uh, OpenCV. So the way you uh, load an image is using the imread uh, function. So uh, I have, if you remember, I copied image.jpg into here. Uh, we're going to also go ahead and resize the image. So we're going to resize the image, uh, and it's going to be a 224 by 224 image. Okay. So next, finally, so OpenCV is kind of weird uh, in that it, uh, so you know normally, have you ever heard of RGB? So RGB is for red, green, blue, right? So each of the pixels are aligned into red, green, and blue groups, right? Well, the thing with OpenCV is it actually imports the, uh, it imports in uh, BGR, blue, green, red, instead of RGB. So we're going to convert it back into RGB just for this model. So uh, you can see right here, this is the function that we use. And this is a parameter. So this is going to tell it to convert the color from BGR to RGB. So now we have a uh, RGB image. So we can look at this image. Uh, okay, and we'll say plt dot show. And so let me show you what we're actually going to classify, right? So remember, guys, this is like, um, you know, this is, uh, there's brilliant scientists here. Uh, you know, some of the most brilliant scientists in this field uh, in the world working on this. 
Uh, and so we have like incredible power here, right? This, this is a very, very powerful model, VGG16. Uh, you know, Oxford, the, it's from, developed by Oxford, so they have probably access to very, very powerful computers. Uh, so, you know, obviously, uh, so we're gonna use this to classify something. So uh, I'll show you what, what we're gonna use to classify. So, of course, you know, we have all this power. We have to classify toilet paper. <laughs> okay, so we're going to classify an image of toilet paper uh, and see if the mo a model can figure out that we're looking at toilet paper. So, uh, uh, let's go ahead and apply our regular pre-processing. So, we need to import this as a float32 image. Okay. So, uh, and then we're going to... We're going to convert it to a float and divide it by 255 so that we can normalize between the 0 and 1. So now we're just going to go ahead and uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and reshape it again to be in a format that the neural network can read. Uh, so like this. Okay. So next, let's actually get the model to predict, right? So model.predict uh, image. So Here's the thing, if you just do this, right? You saw on the output there's a thousand neurons, right? So it's basically gonna give you a list with a thousand different parameters and there'll all be a bunch of labels with different levels of confidence. So for a human, that's basically, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's, it's basically just gibberish. So we need to, uh, so they've created a function for us so that way it'll translate that output into something that humans can actually read. So. Uh, we'll say VGG16, so uh, they have this function called decode predictions. So you can say prediction, uh, we'll give it this prediction that we just uh, uh, computed earlier and we'll uh, tell it to, we'll, we'll give it the prediction, tell it to decode it and give us the top 10 predictions. So what does this mean? Uh, well, remember in the output layer, uh, it's gonna have like different levels of confidence for each of the classes, right? So there's going to be some number from 0 to 1 on the output of each of the neurons. And the higher the number, the higher the confidence that that is the correct value. So it's going to print us the top five most confident results, right? So let's go ahead and run this, right? So uh, again, very, very powerful model. And we're going to use it to classify toilet paper. So OK, here's our toilet paper. And it's going to run the model. OK, here we go. So you can see the first result is actually toilet tissue, right? Uh -huh. And then next result is paper towel, which you can see. Uh, then mosquito net and shower curtain. So you can see as you go down, it kind of becomes uh, less relevant, like a toilet seat. Um, but uh, you, know, you can see the first result, toilet tissue, is, is actually correct. Uh, usually what they found is that uh, the, the first result, I think, has about like 70% accuracy. And then this, if you look at the top five results, the uh, accuracy is about in the, uh, like 90%. So uh, you probably want to get a few of the results from the top. Uh, in this case, you know, the first result is correct. OK. So uh, yeah, you can use this to classify anything. Again, I uh, just wanted to show you how you can use that. So. Now let's actually go ahead and do some transfer training. So uh, let's do, okay, so again, uh, let me show you right here. So, okay, we have 12 images of dogs, right? Dogs and cats. So here's the thing. Earlier we did uh, classification of, uh, ima or of uh, handwritten digits, right? And I remember I told you that the neural network, uh, the convolutional neural network was kind of overkill for that because it's a very small image, right? Now, these images are of varying sizes, but we're going to kind of just squeeze them into 244 by 244. Uh, but anyway, so this is where a convolutional neural network would actually come in handy. But the thing is, to train a convolutional neural network to build it from scratch, you need thousands and thousands of images. And believe me, I've actually done this myself. Uh, my first project I assigned for myself was to create a cat dog classifier from scratch. Uh, and uh, not completely from scratch, like using these libraries, but like, uh, you know, to build it myself. So I, I came up with the architecture. 
and I started training. I got thousands of images of cats and dogs, right? And I started training, <laughs> and uh, it took a really long time. Also, back then, I didn't have a GPU, so it took like a really, really long time, and the results weren't that great, right? So this is what I should have really done, right? Because uh, I had thousands and thousands of images, and it took forever to load and everything, because think about it, all of that stuff has to go into my graphics card, or, or I guess my integrated graphics card uh, back then, and it would have to load off of that. So it was really slow, and it was a really bad idea. So instead here, we have 12 images, and you can see how uh, the accuracy is going to go, because back then, like I would get like 20% accuracy or something like that, less, less than if you just did random chance, right? So uh, this is what we're gonna we're gonna do transfer training now, right? So uh, I'll explain to you what it exactly is. So let's go ahead and import the VGG16 model again. Okay, and so we're gonna import instead of sequential this time we're gonna import model, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so uh, also we're gonna go ahead and import the dense. Uh, okay. We're going to also need NumPy and uh, OpenCV. Also, we're going to need this other thing called OS. Now, o OS is a library that's already built into the, into Python. When you install Python, it always, always comes with that. So first, let's go ahead and load our images. If you remember, it's in that uh, it's in that directory called data, right? So uh, this is how you can load a bunch of files, right? So uh, you can have it. So use the OS. And then you say list dir, and so we'll give it the data directory, right? So if you now if I print image pads, uh, and let me just run this directly here, you can see it gives us all of those images that were in there, right? So now what you'll notice is that I uh, here if I open up a file manager, uh, let's go ahead and I'll put this in full screen, uh, make this bigger. Okay. Okay, and we'll go into the transfer learning. So it's down here. Uh, okay, so you'll see that the images. So when they start, when they start with cat, that's is it's an image of a cat. And when it starts with dog, it's an image of a dog, right? So um, that's what we're going to use to create the labels for this. So uh, let's go ahead and start doing that. So we have our. Uh, images here. So now I'm going to create some blank arrays uh, and I'll explain this all in a second. So uh, okay, so okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and start uh, importing these images. Okay. So we're gonna go in order. So for path and image path, so again, we're gonna iterate through each element of that array, which is gonna have all those images, the, the names of all those images. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna mread. Uh, and so remember, it's in the data directory, so we have to add this, and then we'll go ahead and append to that the path, right? So it's gonna say data slash dogs zero dot jpeg or something like that, right? Uh, okay, so now again we're gonna go ahead and do that basic pre-processing. So convert the color. Uh, we're gonna want to convert it to uh, RGB, right? So there we go. So BGR to RGB. Okay. Next, we're gonna resize the image uh, to a two twenty four by two twenty four. Uh, image equals so we're going to turn it back into a full 32 and now we're going to go ahead and divide by 255 okay so now we're going to add the image right so we finished all the pre-processing on the image now we're going to go ahead and add it to the x string okay uh, so now we need to figure out whether it's an image of a cat or a dog and append that to Y train, right? So uh, I'm just going to say path because it's a string, right? So we have the starts with function. So if it starts with the dog, then I can go ahead and uh, append Y train dot append uh, one 
otherwise, so that, that means that it's a cat, right? So then I want to go ahead and append a zero. So let's remember that dogs are one and cats are zero. Okay, so if it's a, if the output is closer to a one, then it's a cat. Uh, sorry, it's a dog. If it's closer to zero, then it's going to be a cat. Okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, okay. Let's actually convert this into numpy array. So p dot as array, and this is just going to make it uh, faster because numpy arrays are faster. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this to y train. Okay. So now these are arrays. So So now let's go ahead and create our model, right? So uh, well, we're going to load the model, right? So so our model is going to be the vgg16 dot vgg16. Okay. So for so now remember if you remember uh, the if you remember I I was pointing out that you know when we print out the summary of the model. It tells you that uh, this one is a uh, this is these are the trainable parameters. These are non-trainable parameters. So here, so now I'm going to explain to you what exactly we're doing here, right, with the transfer training. So normally you would train your entire network from scratch, right? But here's the thing: this, uh, if you remember, it's a thousand different categories, right? So that means that those first layers are really, really good at extracting extracting features, right? So if you give any image in there, it'll be really good at extracting general features, which are good for uh, uh, processing for output, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to leave that first part of the network alone, right? All those convolutions, and in this case, even those first two fully connected networks, uh, fully connected layers, we're going to leave those alone, right? So those are we're going to those are already we're going to say those are already trained, right? And instead, we're going to focus only on the output layer, right? So we want to be able to create a layer that's able to interpret whatever those inputs are, and then we want to be able to, you know, interpret that for our own output, right? So we're going to feed the image into the VGG16. We're going to chop off the output layer, right? Those thousand, uh, those thousand output layer neurons at the end, we're going to chop those off of the network. We're going to add our own one layer, one neuron no, uh, a layer, right? So we're going to add an extra neuron at the end. And that neuron is going to have a sigmoid function, sigmoid out output function. And the reason we're going to use sigmoid is because it, um, for binary output, right? So from 0 to 1, right? Uh, that, it's better for that. So we're going to use a sigmoid output, right? Uh, so it'll be, we'll be able to determine 0 or 1. And so. Uh, and we're going to put that neuron at the end of the network instead of that thousand, instead of those thousand neurons at the end. So uh, let me show you how we're going to do that. So first, we want to make sure that uh, it's not going to uh, it's not going to train those layers that we don't need it to, right? So uh, for every single layer in this model, we want to set the trainable to false, right? So what this does. It's going to make sure it doesn't train those uh, all those layers. Excuse me. Okay. So now we need to go ahead and chop off that last layer and add our own custom layer, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use that um, model. Remember, I uh, imported it earlier, uh, and so this takes in inputs and outputs. So the inputs are going to be the same thing as the model, right? So the uh, model's inputs. This, this is the VTG16 inputs, right? And the output, this is where we're going to replace it, right? So we're going to apply a dense, we're going to apply a dense layer, right? Again, one, one neuron, and the activation function is going to be a sigmoid. And we're going to apply this to model dot layers of minus two. I'll explain this in a second. Dot output. Okay. So what is this doing? So it's going to apply, so you can think of this dense thing, oh shoot, okay. You can think of this thing, right, right here that I'm highlighting. This, you can think of it as a function, right? So we're applying this function to this models, right? Okay, uh, again, this, shoot, okay, sorry. This models 
this model's output, right? So this model is model.layers of minus two. What does this mean? It, it means that it's gonna chop off the last, right? So whenever I say of minus two, that means the last two, uh, last two elements, or in this case, the last two layers are gonna be removed, right? So if it has all of those layers, it's gonna chop off the last one, and then uh, it's gonna give us the output, and we're gonna feed that output into this dense layer. So you'll see in a second, once I print out the summary, right, that uh, this is doing what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and do that. Excuse me. So you can see right here, the first part of the network is exactly the same, right? So the input is still 224 by 224 by 3. It runs all these convolutions and pooling and everything, right? Uh, then it flattens it, runs it to the same denses. Again, none of this is being trained. I'll show you in a second. And then we're finally going to train this uh, last dense, right? And this is only one neuron. Now let's look back at the summary right here, right? So total trainable parameters is 134 million, uh, you know. So, and the trainable is only 4,097. If you look right here, again, previous network has 4096 so that means there's 4096 weights plus the one bias from this neuron right so 4097 parameters that needs to optimize that's it right all of this stuff is non-trainable because we're not going to worry about this stuff right because it's already been trained by the people at oxford right uh so it's been trained by the people at oxford we no longer have to worry about that we're just going to worry about our output so we want to interpret everything that this the rest of the network interprets from the image everything all those features that it's going to extract we just need to interpret that into uh, cats and dogs right okay so let's go ahead and compile uh, the, uh, compile it and let's run the optimizer which is going to be Adam uh, loss equals so we're going to use a binary cross entropy right uh, and we're going to set the metrics to Accuracy. We don't want to forget this time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, optimizer is the same. Loss this time instead of the sparse categorical cross entropy, we're going to use binary cross entropy. Again, instead of categorical data, we have binary data. It's still categorical, but you know we have binary categories. So we're just going to stick with binary cross entropy. So now let's train the model. Uh, this time we don't have any uh, validation data. Uh, but that should be fine. Uh, so we're going to run on for 15 epochs this time. Uh, so again, we want to. We don't want to waste our training. So we're just going to save this to. Uh, okay, sorry, we're going to save this to model .h5. Now, last time the model was very small, right? It was like a couple of megabytes. This time the model is going to be a lot bigger because it's going to have to store all of the uh, weights for the VGG16 plus the weights for our. Uh, final layer, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and let me make this bigger. Uh, okay, so let's cd into the transfer training. Okay, and let's run the transfer training. Okay. So again, we can see our, our network. Okay, so now it's going to run epoch 1 and 15. There we go. So you can see it was really, really fast, right? That's because one, we only have 12 images, right? So it ran through all 15 epochs very, very quickly. So one reason was because, again, we had only uh, 12 images. And second thing was it only had to train 4,097 uh, parameters, right? So that was very quick. And you can see the accuracy is, well, this is 100%, right? Now, in reality, in the actual, uh, if you actually look at the the uh, validation uh, data, it would probably be lower than that, but it's still going to be very high, right? And you know, you have a hundred percent accuracy on your on your uh, on your training data, so that's that's really good. Especially like you saw how quick that was, right? Like uh, within a blink of an eye, it was already finished training. So, and then also we have our our model right here, model.h5. 
Now if I do a long list, uh, you'll see this is 512 megabytes, right? So half a gig. That's that's a lot of, that's, that's a really big model. So, uh, you know, you, you might want to keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, that's 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 all we have. That's all I have. So uh, I hope that you guys uh, enjoy your break. Uh, I know it took a really long time to, uh, you know, release this final video, but hopefully uh, you guys learned a lot from it. And uh, you know, see you next year. Bye.